Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this roundtable discussion as part of the 14th DLSU Arts Congress. In response to this year's theme, The Pandemic, Resilience, and the Arts, we, the faculty members of the DLSU Senior High School Arts and Design Track, joins the discourse on the online delivery of workshop, theory, and inter interdisciplinary art courses through this roundtable discussion. With the unprecedented impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, faculty members and students alike have faced this laborious task of migrating um, classroom education and activities to various online platforms. The purpose of today's discussion is to present to you the experiences and observations of the arts and design track faculty members of the De La Salle University Senior High School in rolling out their program and curriculum in this online distance learning context. We will talk about the challenges, the opportunities, and implications of the online distance learning to art education and delivery of lessons. I am Candice Perez. I am a faculty of ADP for Media and Information Literacy, and I will be the moderator for this roundtable discussion. Please allow me to introduce first our discussants, the members of the roundtable discussion. They will be representing their co-teachers in their specific art disciplines. In ADT, um, in DLSU Senior High School Arts and Design Track, we have the visual and multimedia arts, performing arts, creative writing, and arts management theory and research. In addition, the arts and humanities core subjects are also represented in this discussion. Prior to this roundtable discussion, these representatives met with their colleagues and gathered their insights to ensure that we'll be able to have a comprehensive and thorough discussion about the topic. So this roundtable discussion is actually a collaboration of the entire DLSU Arts and Design Track Unit. So let us welcome our first discussant, Ms. Jerry Lou Marie Jeng Buted from the Arts Production Strand. She will provide insights on how the unit implemented the visual and multimedia art courses online in the absence of an art studio or multimedia arts laboratory. She, she will also represent the creative writing stream. Hi, Ms. Jeng. Hi, Ms. Candice. Hello, teachers, and hello to all the Congress participants. Thank you, Miss. Next is Miss Daryl Gadingan. She is representing the Performing Arts Strand, providing insights on how the Performing Arts courses, they, did they survive or are they thriving in the absence of a face-to-face -face interactive learning environment, such as a dance studio, a music room, a proscenium, and the like. Hi, Miss Da. Hello, Ms. Candice. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be part of this particular discussion. And hello to everybody who's going to be participating with us today. Thank you, Ms. Daryl. We also have with us Mr. Hansel Gapayao. He is to represent the arts management and arts research teachers. We will hear his insights on how these courses equip young artists and designers with art managerial skills and knowledge that are fitting to the demands of our time. Hi there, Sir Hans. Hello, good day, Ms. Candice. Good day, everyone at the LSU Arts Congress. Thank you, sir. And lastly, we have the coordinator of the Arts and Design Track Unit of the De La Salle University Senior High School, Mr. Engelbert Talunton. His presentation will be about the experiences of teaching some of the depth ed senior high school course, core courses, highlighting the essential competencies, content, and the activities administered during the online classes. Hi there, Sir Engel. Hello, Ms. Candice. Kamusta po kayong lahat? na nanonood nitong roundtable discussion na may mapulot kayong uh, aral sa aming mga sharings for uh, this activity. Yes, uh, right you are, Sir Engel. So let us begin our discussion. Like what you have mentioned, Sir, our purpose for this discussion is to be able to present our experiences, observations, and reflections on the conduct of ADT courses in this ODL or online distance learning. Um, our goal is to be able to impart to our audience insights on how to roll out an arts and design program in context of online learning. So let's start with our first question. Um, almost one year, and I think we are nearing celebrating the anniversary of Kala Natin, a one-week suspension lamang. But uh, here we are one year in, in um, online, online format. Um, back then in March 2020, when we have to suddenly 
transfer or migrate our classes, face-to-face -face classes to online learning. I want to know how the ADT, your, your fields, cope with the sudden transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online learning back in March 2020. Um, maybe, you, Sir Hansel, would you like to begin? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Candice. Well, uh, during that time, during March 2020, as far as we remember, we are rolling out the, the FIA or the Developing Filipino Identity in the Arts course, which is a community engagement course that we plan for our ADT students. So grade 12, no? this is their culminating activity no? um, before they could graduate. So we were all excited into planning out how do mm -hmm. we conduct the community engagement, where would we go, uh, what are the paperwork that we could do, uh, how, what, uh, how can the students uh, impart this, uh, their skills, no? how can they use their learned, uh, all the years, that the, all the terms rather, that they learned their uh, art production skills and art making skills, how could they apply this into the community. But lo and behold, no, uh, we all um, experienced that sudden uh, what we call it, um, suspension of classes. And then we have to immediately think of ways to um, divert and translate that community engagement activity into something that can be done because everything's closed. No, we cannot go out of our home. We cannot um, just simply buy food from the grocery because everything's limited. So uh, it, at first, it was really heartbreaking for us because the students were looking forward to it. But uh, what we did uh, just for this emergency remote teaching was to convert it into a simulated paper uh, that for the students to, we gave them a case study that they could think and then um, answer it according to what can, what will they do you know, in accordance to the lessons that we had. So it was really a rough transition for that mm -hmm. subject, to, so to speak. But it is what it is. And we have to provide the best possible way of teaching community engagement to the students, even um, on the online setup. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Candice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hi. Sir Hans. Who would like to go next? Ms. Candice, can I go next? Uh, go ahead, Sir Engel. Okay, so I'm here to, uh, as the Arts and Design Track Coordinator and representing the core subjects that we offer in the Arts and Design Track, um, namely philosophy, media and information literacy, contemporary Philippine arts from the regions, and uh, 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. So these are four core subjects that we offer in the Arts and Design Track unit. Well, in the... Uh, the beginning, um, I would agree with Sir Hans that it was heartbreaking because it's the first time we're supposed to be sending off our first batch of arts and design track graduates of DLSU Senior High School. Um, unfortunately, we're able to do that, and uh, uh, but we're thankful that we're able to accomplish the the academic year. And then suddenly, we needed to prepare for something new, which is to transition for a full online uh, distance learning. And um, there is this uh, tendency for you to um, start working and uh, thinking that everybody, everything has to shift to online distance learning. Uh, but uh, I remember at the time I need to uh, pause you know, as an art as the coordinator uh, for all these subjects that is entrusted to the unit. I needed to pause and reflect um, our, our nature and the purpose of the, the unit. Uh, the humanities, the arts and design, and think of what do what can we do and what is our purpose, especially in this new um, normal, new environment that we are experiencing. And I, I would uh, think I, I would say that uh, yun yung ano that's the that became my uh, guidance to to the teachers, no, um, in eventually uh, to translate this uh, purpose uh, to. Uh, in their in the writing of the modules in adjusting the uh, blueprints and uh, another thing that I, I thought uh, during the reflection was to to think about the resources that are already available because uh, there, there's the feeling of an uh, cram and anxiety uh, when uh, the lockdown happened uh, uh, but it's good to 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 be mindful of the 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 situation 
about the situation and mm -hmm. realize that wait, there are things that are already available and present in the structure. Mm -hmm. We are thankful that in DLSU we have um, the Canvas, which is already an online uh, platform that we are using during the face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that you just have to um, uh, harness these available resources that you have and eventually um, think on what else you can do um, to adjust it to the new normal, which eventually um, that happened. So uh, from our end, um, those were the responses and the things, mm -hmm. initial responses that, uh, uh, that we had and how we uh, try to jump into the new normal. Mm -hmm. I have to agree to that, Sir Engel. No, the I think the immediate reaction of of the teachers is how do we migrate to online distance learning? We are quite aggressive on on transferring our and yeah, I think it's a common response of teachers. Now I, I have to finish my lesson plan. I have to finish my curriculum. But I think it's important that you have mentioned the importance of pausing and reflecting. So we would have a better decision on what to do um, back then in, um, in the continuation of the term. Miss that? Yeah, um, Ms. Kedis, I also have to agree with what was mentioned by Sir Hans and Sir Engel kanina. No? So um, sa amin, siguro hindi na... Um, May, ang hirap talaga sa sitwasyon namin because mm -hmm. our output during that time was directing. So kung may imagine yung position ko ng mga panahon na yun, teka, paano magiging directing when everything is being done online? Mm -hmm. no? So I think the best response that um, we had in the class during that time was really to open all modes of communication available. No, I know that the university right now has implemented a lot of university um, policies when it comes to the security. Mm -hmm. No, But during that time, because you really have to exhaust everything mm -hmm. yeah. no, to the point that I understand not all of my students have internet connection at their homes during that time. No? And that was also my case. I was heavily mm -hmm. relying on data during that time. No? And mm -hmm. still, with the platforms that we were already using at the university in the past, we get to have a response because most of our students could respond while they're in school. No, So mm -hmm. during that time, I really had to ask the permission of my students, could mm -hmm. we communicate through our mobile phones and all that? So that sometimes mm -hmm. my instructions, I had to send it to them through text message No, mm -hmm. because even my comments in their thesis, because that's also one of the major outputs that we had during that time. No, That was third term. No, That's the final mm -hmm. output of our graduating mm -hmm. students. I, I really mm -hmm. had to send my comments through text message because for one of my students that's the only mode of communication that oh, yeah. I could mm -hmm. have with them mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so um, just like what's mentioned earlier we want to be able to adjust the output in all that in everything that we do in class but I think it's also the same case with all of the educators no? we communicated mm -hmm. with our students to know what's the available resources at home so that that could prob uh, properly guide us in what we could do yeah. to the activities that we have in our classes so for me I, I think that's I think for most of us the best response that we did is really to make sure that we could communicate and check in just like what's mentioned by exactly. Sir Angel earlier right to, to check in Mm -hmm. with everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Miss Dad. It's very true. Communication is really essential. But back then, no, we are still establishing our system, our format, our means of communication. We're still preparing our equipment. So um, congratulations, Miss Dad. That's actually, I, I can't imagine how to run a theater performing um, um, courses on an online format in this kind of situation. Miss Jeng? I think um, listening to the sharing of the teachers, I feel very lucky because we have a very different dynamics with the arts mm -hmm. strand because of somehow the digital nature of it because um, we are covering visual and multimedia arts and also creative writing. And uh, with VMA, we actually have individual outputs in all our workshop classes. So it's um, despite the collaborative nature of things, they still have mm -hmm. to work on their individual works, mm -hmm, except mm -hmm. of course for filmmaking. Um, but the very first thing that we did when the pandemic happened and we all shifted to the online setting, I think it was really to check on how the students were doing because we mm -hmm. were adjusting. But at the same time, the students are not used to this despite the mm -hmm. blended classes that we already offer in DLSU. During mm -hmm. this time, so we had creative writing, we had media studies and portfolio making for 
the VMA students as well as culture and installation art. So for the three media studies, siguro we shifted lang from paper because we like to mm-hmm. have the papers printed and you know checking it and mm-hmm. maybe sometimes checking grammar and stuff. But we shifted mm-hmm. quickly to blogs. Yun yung aming mm-hmm. naging solution. Then portfolio, it's digital in nature. Siguro um, ang naging hirap lang doon is that you're no longer able to be in the classroom. Pwede kang umikot. Tignan yung mga mm-hmm. ginagawa ng bata and give them immediate um, mentoring. Pero I think it was quite easy compared to the experiences of the other teachers. Sculpture and installation art, what we did was because this was gearing towards the end of the term already. The students know already at the beginning of the term what they have to do because they only have seven weeks for Mm -hmm. visual arts and then seven weeks for multimedia arts. So they already were um, almost done with their projects. So hindi lang na-check ng teachers ng yung physical um, artwork, but we opted for the students to submit photos and probably Mm -hmm. the, the process on how they were making it just to ensure that they were the ones who created the projects. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we're quite lucky in APS compared to mm-hmm. the other teachers. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ms. Zheng. I see that somehow it is also dependent to the nature of the courses that we have. Um, maybe the members of the roundtable discussion have comments and anything that they want to add for this first question. Okay, I think we're good to proceed to the next one. Um, we can see from our first discussion, no, uh, as teachers, ang bilis talaga, quickly, we, we need to adapt. We, we need to find ways. We will not allow that our students will live this term not being able to get the competencies that they have to achieve for for the particular term and for the courses at ang galing ang 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 ako i know that it is actually as you have mentioned sir hans it's a rough transition pero the immediate response of teachers what can we do but in doing so we do not neglect also to ask the question like miss jeng like what you have mentioned kamusta yung mga estudyante natin how do we how can we also support them on um, adjusting in this kind of situation thank you for that so with all this experience uh, during this abrupt transition from face to face to online how did it help or how did it inform your preparation for the online distance learning for the next academic year for this academic year what was your or what were the main considerations in redesigning your course um, curriculum. Sir Engel, maybe you would like to start? Okay. Um, like what I said earlier, no, um, the first thing that came to my mind no, in terms of instructing the teachers in working on their uh, modules is to look at the purpose of the, 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 the subjects and the program in general. So we're, we're arts and design track and we're offering humanities subjects. So one of the considerations in the design is to humanize um, the, the courses. How do we humanize the courses knowing that we will be offering it um, through online um, platform? And uh, I, I believe one of the ways that we're able to do it is to ensure that the, the modules that are present in our canvas uh, would actually talk to the students um, and uh, reach out to the students in their comforts of their home as if it was it make it conversational and easy to follow and simple and we we get to offer independent home learning no uh, which is our I, 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 IHL program where students are on their own um, studying the lesson as at home so the more we have to make it more conversational and then second um, preparation is to ensure that the teachers are equipped as well with the necessary skills um, good thing are we have institutional training um, during the before the opening of the classes we have our in-service um, training um, held by the DLSU IS administration to make everybody um, be familiar with the synchronous um, setup, the asynchronous um, 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 sessions, as well as the use of the, the canvas in the Animo system as our platform for learning and give them suggestions and ideas how to proper uh, manage classes in an online setting. And then thirdly, of course, the competencies. No, we have to um, reevaluate and look at the competencies because we have limited time and um, given that we we shorten the the um, the time for face to face in asynchronous classes mm-hmm. and um, allotting some of the time for asynchronous or independent um, mm-hmm. uh, 
sessions, uh, independent sessions with the students, um, then there should be a need for, for us to uh, trim down and choose what is the most important um, competencies um, include in the, the modules. And I believe this are the uh, things that we would try to identify um, first um, and consider during the preparation. Mm -hmm have it translated in our in our modules mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's very true sir engel thank you for for mentioning that it is not just simply you know um transferring our face-to-face -face traditional classes to online format but we have to transform it um uh, totally in a sense that it is that we adapt to the online, but not exactly just, you know, face-to-face -face converting to, to online. Um, there are a lot of factors like what you've mentioned, um, taking in consideration that not all students have good access in the internet. Therefore, we have provided um, modes of learning that would cater to, to this challenge or this issue of, of some students. So um, the BLSU Senior High School and the Arts and Design Track Unit um, was able to address um, such concerns. Thank you for that, Sir Engel. Ms. Jeng? For APS, Miss, um, despite many considerations in the preparation, I think uh, while we were preparing for the online transition, we always had in mind that our personal approach, despite us shifting to the online setting, mm -hmm. has to be there. But then, because um, ganun naman tayo sa, ano eh, sa arts and design track. We're very nurturing to our students. We have to make them sure that despite uh, the number that of students we have, we cater to each of their um, their um, concerns when it comes mm -hmm. to being an artist. Um, some of the things that we had to do was for creative writing, you know, they have this love for, apart from writing, they have this tremendous love for reading. So, yung physical, mm -hmm. uh, physical books, medyo nawala, nahirapan na tayo dun, especially the library also had to close. So, merong mga texts yung ating creative writing students that they really had to change and to find something that's available online, yung ating mga e-books na, mm -hmm. which is quite challenging kasi for us a teacher, minsan may mga bagay kang gustong ituro sa kanila pero yeah. you really have to be creative and think quickly kung ano yung pwede mong i-replace that, replace that will not make the, the content of the subject suffer din naman. Um, for visual arts and multimedia arts, we have to think of strategies on how to teach demos, which is uh, mm -hmm. quite challenging because um, online, hindi yung parang tatawagin mo lang yung students to gather around you and you will teach them how to do mm -hmm. stuff. You have to have resources as well. So camera, dalawang equipment while teaching. For multimedia arts, you have to, we have um, these softwares that are industry used. Mm -hmm. Pero kailangan mong maghanap ng free softwares because not all of the students are able to to buy a licensed copy of things. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it might not be what they use in the industry, but at least the basics of like video editing, how to color stuff, layers, and all that, at least mahagip siya. So, the teachers also really have to be very creative in planning mm -hmm. out the online transition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Miss, resourcefulness and creativity. One thing that I've realized, no, DLSU has a lot of resources online um, during this online transition. There are a lot of databases available. There are softwares available for free. And um, and we're thankful that, that, that we have these resources and it actually helped us in this transition to online learning. Thank yeah. you for that, Miss Zheng. Miss that. Yes, Miss Candice, you've mentioned the term transformation kanina, no? Yeah, every time nga nakikita ko yung term na ODL online, talagang hindi ko maiwasang balikan, sabi ko, ibang-iba ito sa ginagawa namin hmm. before when it comes to the activities and even the things that we're used to. Kagaya ngayon, no? Halos na sanay na akong araw-araw nakaharap ako sa camera na parang celebrity. Siguro nakaka-relate kayong lahat, no? But before, hindi ko talaga siya kaya gawin. It's one of the challenges that I had in the past. But I, I think even with with you know, the, the pressures of online distance learning, what really helped me prepare for it is that I know that the institution is there with us, no? Um, siguro, I, I'd like to coin what was mentioned by Sir Engel earlier, yung scheme natin na mayroong async and sync, no? And then, um, 
the administrators also understand if there are certain topics that had to be dropped no as long as we could ensure that the competencies are met that's huge for teachers like us do na parang hindi lang kailangan ma ma pressure na matapos yung trabaho and that's a good thing and then there are also surveys being conducted so that we'd know how we could better assist the students so that's really very helpful so that we could give more ease as we transition to online distance learning no and then As of the subjects that we're teaching naman and the performing arts, I think we really have to consider the major differences and similarities to the things that are happening right now in ODL mm-hmm. compared to what was happening in face-to-face. One major challenge for us is the concept of space. no? Because for mm-hmm. most of us in performing arts, for example, in dance and in theater no we really need the space for us to be able to teach and we don't know what's the situation at home ng aming mga bata mm-hmm, and even mm-hmm. us no teachers and then at the same time when we present our performances it's not really on stage but rather in camera so that also has to be considered no baka there are some things that we had to recontextualize let's say we're still mm-hmm. teaching the concept of space but right now my mm-hmm. space is not the stage any longer but now it becomes the frame of my camera mm-hmm. so how mm-hmm. am i go so na imagine mo sabi ko kanina dati hindi ako comfortable no na nakaharap mm-hmm. sa camera but now that's the thing that we're doing in class and that's something that we're teaching our students and I think um, you've also experienced this. You ask your students not to to um, send video submissions, mm-hmm. no, and that's something that hopefully mm-hmm. we're aiding them with in mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. performing arts classes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's siguro um, one mm-hmm. of the major things that, that I'd mm-hmm. like to share that we're doing in the performing arts. Miss Da, I just have a curiosity. No, you've mentioned that the stage. Um, is different when it comes to to online distance learning. Instead of stage, it now became it, it it now becomes a it now becomes a frame. No, um, did it change the nature or expectation of um um theater as a genre? Now, before it's actually a stage, a live performance. Now it is recorded and limited on this on this frame that we have. And how did you adjust with this kind of oh hindi na hindi na nasa entablado hindi na ganito yung space yung kanilang ginagalawan eto na so how did it affect po yung inyong preparation for activities lessons That's a good question no Miss Candice. Natatanong din 'yun sa akin kapag even sa mga clubs and orgs na mayroon kami. Kasi hanggang ngayon, meron pa rin tayong theater no sa school, yung mm-hmm. theater org natin sa school. Um siguro it all boils down to you go back to the competencies that you have to teach them mm-hmm. and the skill that you have to teach them no. Let's mm-hmm. say for instance, yun nga the concept of movement, the concept mm-hmm. of utilizing your voice as mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. it has to change. But these are skills that are being taught in um in theater. Right. Mm-hmm. So what's different there is when it comes to movement, for example, if it's in an actual stage, you ask them to give huge movements. Mm-hmm. But in a screen, that's different because you're limited with what's only seen mm-hmm. by your mm-hmm. audience. No, So exactly. you can't have huge movements on screen but then again we have to go back no so yun siya sabi ko the similarity the comparison and the similarity mm-hmm. and the differences of what you're seeing on stage and mm-hmm. what you can see on screen no so you teach them that this is how you move on screen no mm-hmm. it it's much more limited than what you're doing on stage but then again you have to still go back kasi yun ang matinuturo namin talaga is mm-hmm. the, the stage skill to them no mm-hmm. so you still have to go back to that in real to that no because in the case of our grade um grade 12 students right now they started off their workshops on stage and now we went to green so sa kanila pabaliktad no we start the concept on stage and then we relate it to screen yung grade 11 naman natin that's a different story we start naman ng screen kasi nagkit nagkitaan na kami unang una sa screen muna no so the concept of movement first in a limited setup and then after our discussion on that saka kami pupunta doon o kapag nasa stage na mas malaki na siya and then together with space we also have the challenge on voice no because we're using camera in an, an Uh, sorry, a microphone in an online setup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And in in stage, you ask them to, oh, you use your stage voice. And could you just imagine mm-hmm. if I will be using my stage voice in in an <laughs> online setup? It would be too loud, no? For everybody yeah. mm-hmm. in the hall. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. another adjustment. And that's another mm-hmm. thing, no? Siguro, mm-hmm. um, yeah, some of the pointers mm-hmm. that you had to adjust in, mm-hmm. in ODL. 
Mm-hmm. I think no, I, I, Sir Engel, Miss Jeng um, have mentioned also, it's really important to go back what are your most essential competencies. In our case in arts and design, what is or what are the most uh, essential skills, the very foundational skills that we have to teach to our students. And even though if it is online, we still have to go back. These are the, the important skills that we have to be able to impart to our students. And I like what you have mentioned, Miss Dano, that we also have to look in to the background or the training of our students like your grade 11 um, started with an online format and therefore your 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 thinking is from online to the stage while the grade 12 naman they started with the stage face to face and how um, how they will transition to the screen very very good idea miss miss that thank you sir hansel hi uh uh, going back to the question of preparation, no? um, unlike what we had sa remote, uh, emergency remote learning, we're in very, um, um, tawag nito, uh, medyo aligaga kaming lahat. No? Pagdating naman sa preparations for the academic uh, academic year, sorry, in uh, knowing, no, anticipating that this is, this is an online um, year no, for us and still being in the, in the pandemic, um, we and the teachers, uh, we have to go to our to the essence of our subject, which is mm-hmm. the arts mm-hmm. management. And the essence being is we have to focus on real world situations, and we have to train our students that this is the current um, context that we have and what is needed for us. No, what is needed sa creatives pagdating sa ganitong context, kasi may context ka ng pinagagalawan, eh, no? Um. At the start of the term, no, we always at the start of the academic year, no, uh, we we made sure that the student realized that hey, the creative industry is working, no. So so yeah. na, napansin namin, no, napansin namin that um heavily affected ang creative industry during the pandemic, and it's a spectrum, no. Um, there are industries like the museums, the theaters, the the exhibitions who are really put on hold no uh, talagang tumigil silang lahat because they they base their um, operations from the from the audiences no so gatherings of people whereas pagdating mo sa graphic design industry pagdating mo sa sa design sa services booming sila no booming ang mm-hmm. ibang industry so so the students nakita nila that um the creative industry their their possible prof- profession in the future is uh and daming nangyayari ano fluid um so so we, we always have to to mind uh to give them no opportunities to for them to realize that what they're doing in class that what we're learning in class is applicable and actually it's real life based no we have to calibrate our courses yes um us being in the arts management we have text already we follow concepts that are established mm-hmm. by uh, management theories in the past we have practices we have case studies but given the situation that we have we have to apply it to the real wa- mm-hmm. real life no mm-hmm. one good example is um ngayon nat- nakikita ng mga estudyante ng mga students of being arts and design no they, they see that and daming commission based um yeah. services and daming mm-hmm. nagpapa and daming mga co i don't know if they, it's their colleagues or other students mm-hmm. or other mm-hmm. artists who will or are now open to do commissions for the sake of earning no earning um income because at this time we're in we are facing economic challenges so so they are seeing that so we are telling them that um uh, what you do in arts and design although we are not workshop classes no we don't teach um artistic skills what we teach is how to use those artistic skills for a purpose, whether it's for earning money or mm-hmm. for building yourself up as an artist mm-hmm. or for help, helping others. So how do they use that? So we make sure that our activities, our assessments are real life-based. If it's not simulations, mm-hmm. it can be applied um, realistically. For example, mm-hmm. no, we our final output is an initiative that they will have to launch no, that in which they can sell or they can provide services to other people. So um, we have to grab that opportunity that our field is relevant in our time. No? In a time where in everything was in a pause. No? So, so everyone was turning into arts and design for comfort, for 
um, for relief. No, so mm-hmm. I, I told them we have to cap, we have to offer, uh, maximize that opportunity. That right now we are needed, and as creative future creative leaders, you have to realize that we live in a context, ever changing context. So you have to adapt to the times. You have to build that set of skills on how to adapt to that context. So we also putting it skills. No, our colleagues here would always tell on the skills no, that is needed. So we also give them essential skills like um, how do you negotiate? How do you communicate? How do you resolve conflicts? And those are little things that we, we try to, to recalibrate on our, mo- on our modules and our courses. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sir Hansel. I think to wrap up in this particular question, so what are the main considerations? What I have um, got from our participants are one, uh, they, they consider the most essential skills to impart to the students what, what needs to be um, uh, added or included in the in the in the module or in the course plan. Um, you also mentioned how it is in, like what Sir, Sir Hansel have mentioned, the relevance of the assessments of the activities to the situation or as response to the current situation. You have also mentioned that um, how can the students adjust? We also considered that. How can the students adjust better to an online distance learning? What are their backgrounds? What are their experiences? What are their situations? I think I would also like to emphasize, I, this is from Sir Engel, no, that our administrators, our school, the management also provided us with a st- structure and it has helped us structure and resources like the async, sync, um, the guidelines, the training. And it has helped us in creating also what principles to consider and apply in redesigning our curriculum. Anything that you want to add more, um, panel members? Okay, Ms. I think. This. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Dap. I, I think um, I was able to briefly mention this. Um, earlier then, but you've mentioned also the support that we have across all the departments. No, for mm-hmm. example, the library. Just recently, we had more resources from mm-hmm. the library uh, when it comes to art-related resources, and mm-hmm. that's really something that we're we're very thankful of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly, Miss Da. Thank you. Uh, I think no, with all these preparations that we have for the start of the term, siguro isa ako I would admit to this one. Excited ako no umpisa. Nung nung June July. Ay, wow, para para ang saya pala gumawa ng module. I'm so sorry. I, I, I think the other co-teacher, wow, masaya siya gumawa ng module. Sana all. Pero I think at the beginning, diba, it, it, it's, it's an exciting idea. It's a, it's a new learning, um, learning opportunity. But I know that when we roll out the modules that we have prepared, I, I would be honest as well, mayroong frustration, but parang hindi nag-work. So I think I, I want to know no, the, the actual happening in the classrooms. Uh, how did you roll out the, the curriculum? What are the results? How did the students respond? So I want to know, please kindly describe how, how things went inside your classroom or things are going inside your classroom. What worked? What did not work? What are the, the challenges and what are the victories that you had po in rolling out your um, a lesson plan and uh, modules. Miss Candice, um, siguro uh, being a coordinator, I get to see yung from the perspective of having a general view of the experiences. No, I would be very realistic. No, um, that the experience is not always good. No, and this change that we experience is messy. No. And sudden, no? nobody has a, a perfect um, plan or blueprint on how to, to deal with uh, the pandemic. Um, but we do have available resources naman. Um, well, one of the major concerns is internet connection. No? Sabi nila kapag taga DLSU ka, no? you have all the resources. But yeah, perhaps no, a good number of our students and our faculty have available um, connections at home, but remember the locations, di ba? Iba pa rin yung locations sa mga students, even if you have uh, capacity to uh, to avail internet services, sometimes the, the location simply doesn't um, give you the, the right connection, and uh, this is a common, um, this is a main challenge for both our students and faculty. 
uh, and how to to address these concerns. Good thing um, um, we do have a uh, part of our policy is to record our synchronous classes. That's how we deal this problem, no? To ensure that if someone misses the lesson, we share these recordings of our synchronous classes and help them be able to catch up. And secondly, you know, we were we tried to be as lenient as possible, no, when it comes to um, consideration, giving students considerations in terms of submissions, um, especially if it's caused by um, uh, internet connection and uh, some other reasons, no? And then secondly, um, more than the curriculum itself, kasi sabi mo nga, Ms. Candice, we were excited in designing it, no? Uh, we really put our heart and soul in writing the module. But sometimes when you roll it out and you in, I interview teachers, they would tell me, sir, I'm kind of frustrated because uh, my some of my students are not responding um, that well, no, compared to face to face, some of them um, simply do not have the appetite, no, for or motivation for learning. They were down, they were sad, they were frustrated. They don't see their colleagues. Um, they still wanted to be in a face to face setting. So we are also faced um, with a challenge of um, motivation um, from the end of our students, and sometimes affecting as well the teachers, no? even though we are adults, because um, the pandemic has um, brought us a lot of um, you know, feeling of anxiety, sadness, and depression no? um, because of what we encounter staying just at home and being far from the usual routine um, and the people that we meet um, on a regular basis. And this we have to uh, address as well. No? Um, and again, uh, we are fortunate that we do have the help of the guidance counseling office. And then there's a, a, a very active collaboration among faculty, you know, professors, and homeroom advisors. So they became, um, the role of the homeroom advisors uh, became indispensable in this time of online learning because they are the ones who get to monitor um, without the help and the assistance of this support, no educational support. It's also hard to roll out um, some of our instructions, no, when especially with psychological needs of our students. I think I would like to highlight that because sometimes we are only focused with the curriculum and the instruction inside the classroom. But remember that there are other factors that affects our students. And for most of our arts and design track, no, um, students, no, siguro I'm not stereotyping, but. You know, artists have this, um, they call it the artist mood, no? and I observed that among art um, student um, artists that uh, there is the, this uh, very emotional, very Im sensitive, no? um, very empathic of the situations. No? And um, you really have to put guidance to these young artists, um, students, um, on how to be able to um, harness yung kanila motivation and that kind of sensitivity and feeling about what's happening during the pandemic and turn this um, situation and that feeling to as an inspiration to to produce art and to perform better in in the classroom uh siguro i'd like to highlight that too na internet connection and then your psychological needs of our students the rest i know there are a lot of challenges that our other panelists uh will be able to share mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Sir Engel, on the internet connection, the technical uh, challenges, and also motivation, something more um, psychological, emotional on the end of our students. And I think, Sir Engel, also from the teachers and administrators as well. I, I totally agree, Ms. Candice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sir Engel. Who would like to go next? Anyone? Ms. Candice, go next. Okay. So um, this goes with everyone, I guess, all of the teachers who's, um, who transition to online setting. It's really very challenging, especially certain specialized uh, workshop classes because in grade 12, natin, you already built a connection because you mm -hmm. met them in person. But in yeah. grade 11, for them, it's a, it's a new world because they're entering senior high school. Some of them, no, actually, all of them, they they came from a different school. So, mm -hmm. parang ang dami nilang iniisip. Tapos, ikaw din as a teacher, parang nahihirapan ka. How am I going to connect to these students na mm -hmm. hindi ko pa na-meet ever? 
Tapos um, minsan yung mga bata hindi nabubukas ng camera and also it's very difficult you don't have those cues that you have that you get in the classroom. So you don't know how they receive the lectures if naiintindihan ba nila or um, some of them are really um scared to ask questions so parang after ng class sa kanila i-ray so it's very very challenging and for for our, our for our art classes i mentioned earlier yung ating personal approach very personalized approach yun yung mahirap eh, na nawala um mm-hmm. yun yung immediate feedback to the students parang hindi mo agad mapigay hindi mo alam kung uh, kapag nasa classroom ka lahat sila alam mo na nandoon yung momentum gumagawa sila nagpipinta gumagawa ng design but if you give them the, the the requirements you don't know when they will do it so parang hindi kayo at the same time ginagawa yung mga dapat gawin um another challenge is that um really for visual arts na challenge yung ating pagtuturo ng techniques and processes kasi ito yun nga pag magkakasama kayo sa classroom you will tell them how to really hold a brush and all that pero mm-hmm. yun, hindi na natin magawa ngayon some of the best practices of the teachers in the arts production strand is that um we provide differentiated activities because not of not all these students are equally talented when it comes to the medium so you have to mm-hmm. be, uh, create activities that is suited for their skills at the moment and then you also have to really provide personal consultation so even outside the the school uh the, the time the schedule of the class you have to really spend time with them to make sure that they are guided along the way um for uh, matters of academic honesty we use time lapse as an option so that okay. we know we see how the students are doing it in that way the visual arts teacher are able to monitor also how the, the students are doing it their techniques and the process um very important for this um leniency and when it comes to mm-hmm. the materials because not all of the students have the materials at home sometimes it's hard for them to order online they are not allowed to go outside mm-hmm. so you um the challenge then yung mga estudyante natin sa pagiging resourceful mm-hmm. sometimes for painting if coffee is all they have at home then let's go for coffee painting mm-hmm. um um yung sagot natin doon sa technique it's really more of exploration now so um you you teach the basics and then you let the students develop they explore mm-hmm. so yun naman tayo sa senior uh yun naman tayo sa senior high school eh. um we teach our students the basic but we let them build their creative process their mm-hmm. identity mm-hmm. as an artist mm-hmm. and also i think because of the online setting now i think it this is one of the pros we are able to invite resource speaker <laughs> na parang mahihirapan tayo to invite kung nasa kung nasa school tayo yeah. kasi time nila the transportation and all that now even those who are abroad we can invite they just have to 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 adjust to the schedule of the students and i think this is one this is the last uh, thing that i would like to share with all of the teachers a reminder for all the visual and multimedia arts teachers is that at the end of the day um with all the guidance that we provide to the students dapat masabi natin and this is the instruction that we have to give to the students that dapat um the the end product should always be appealing aesthetically So despite the process siguro may mga shortcuts in the process but at least you have to provide you, mm-hmm. you have to create an output that's really beautiful when you look at at least acceptable mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. ayan po ang aming uh, mm-hmm. yun po sa amin from APS Mm-hmm. Thank you, Miss Jeng. I think yung highlight, no, um, I'm also teaching contemporary Philippine arts. At isa sa mga aspeto na tinuturo natin with contemporary Philippine arts would be um, experimentation, play on medium, exploration. So I, I think because of the online distance learning, somehow we are training the students in response to what are the things being done in this contemporary time when it comes to art making. Um Uh, I think the APS, particularly the visual arts and all the, the visual arts, because they need to do it in traditional, the, the traditional process. No, so more than the medium, it's really the it's really the technique in in the process. Thank you for that, Miss Jeng. Thank you for sharing the um, experiences of your team, Miss Dariel. And hi ulit, Miss Candice. Sa amin naman siguro, I have to be honest. The very first challenge that I had, no, is technology. Because I'm not that used to conducting classes in Zoom, right? And 
even for for conferences with family members, I, I do not use the same platform. So it was challenging at first to discover what are the buttons for, no, and then. If you are to contextualize it in our classes, though, um, direction is very big in theater. No, mm -hmm. we have the downstage area, upstage area, left yeah. stage, right stage. So how would you do that in an online setup? Not to mention, you're not really seeing a stage, but your stage is the screen of Zoom. No, so mm -hmm. even asking people in a Zoom call or oh, raise your right hand, you don't even know if what you're seeing in front of your screen is correct, right? Because you never know who's using the the, the mirror, mirror function mm -hmm. of Zoom, right? So, yun, yun yung mga unang challenges ko. But, of course, we have to learn um, the ropes of whatever app it is that we're using in mm -hmm. our classes. Same thing with for the music stream, no? Ang naging challenge na as a music and sa dance is whenever they project the the sound that will be used for the class, um, it's either it's too loud or kapag sasayaw na sila, hindi sumasaba yung tempo. Because we maybe we're using the same platform, but our connections would vary, di ba? So, hindi mo sigurado kung nagsasabay pa ba ng play sa isa't isa. So, that's the biggest challenge that we have in the um, performing arts um, strand, no? Yeah, so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, kailangan nagkakaroon di kami mga teachers, no, bago kami humaharap sa klase. What we did is, we do simulations na ang mga estudyante mo ay makasama mong teachers sa performing arts, no, papasok sila sa call, oh, try natin, I'll have my volume like this, how does that sound to you? Oh, if I play um, some background music and I talk, would you still hear me? Would you still hear my instructions? So, it, it's a matter of, Uulitin ko kanina, it's a matter of communicating talaga with people who you know could really help you. And in this case, because I'm together with the performing arts strand, so these are the right people that I could communicate with and I could share my concerns with. And people who could also share some of the techniques that they do in their classes that could actually help us no, resolve some of the difficulties that we have when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. So I, I think yun yung solution namin for that. And then um, the second challenge that I had, as also mentioned earlier, Year is how everything is very dynamic. No? Sabi nyo nga kanina, no, nagplano ka ng module, tuwang-tuwa ka nung simula, nung ni-roll out mo, ang daming challenges na nagadap. And it's also because there are some unprecedented events such as resources from the end of your students no, or um, events happening. Halimbawa, bumagyo, yung mga ganyan. Mamumove lahat ng nasa module mm -hmm. mo kahit pag-aano ka well-planned at may mga yeah. adjustments ka na nailagay doon. No? I think that's also something that's uh, very challenging. But the, what we did naman to resolve that is, as I've mentioned earlier once again communication no communication with your peers your co-teachers no the admin is always there to help us and also the students because at the end of the day sila yung kasama natin gumagawa ng mga produkto so we also know how we could properly adjust things and for example sa music ang isa pa nilang naging concern when it comes to that is yung app na gagamitin no so not everyone is used to the same app so the teacher also has to make some adjustments no um na kailangan aralin niya lahat ng available apps na pwedeng gamitin ng mga bata so that we could also instruct our students no kasi hindi naman hindi dahil sa mas bata yung generation nila sa atin ay mas alam na nila agad yung technology that's a misconception no magulit ka sa klase mo may mga bagay even the annotate sometimes parang pakiramdam mo ang confident mo okay let's use the annotate function of zoom tapos magulat ka hindi nila alam kung saan hugugutin yung annotate no? so yeah definitely um, technology is one and the other one is being able to dynamically uh, mm -hmm. course through efficiently the, the mm -hmm. modules and mm -hmm. what we'd have to discuss in class Miss mm -hmm. Das since you have highlighted technology quickly lang um um I, I think our our audience would like to know. So far, ano yung nakikita yung effective na platform um, in teaching arts your your arts courses? And ano yung pinaka effective na nagamit yung platform? I believe in the beginning, excited tayong aralin silang lahat. But at the end of it all, ang realization natin, we only need one to two applications to use in our um, um, strategies and classes. Uh, I, I am curious, um, teachers, uh, uh, dear participants, ano yung effective na app application or, or website na ginagamit ninyo in your class? 
Ako, Miss Canis, I would like to share. This is a gem among this, uh, the arts and the science track family. For those teachers who are sharing video, MetaStream is really yeah. our best friend. Kasi minsan, um, kahit sa Zoom ka magsishare ng video, because of the the internet connection, pwedeng nauuna yung video tsaka sa audio. So maglalag. So minsan hindi na maa-appreciate ng mga bata. But really, MetaStream is our best friend. It's like Netflix party. So sabay niyong makikita kita and also I think the option the feature there that I really love is yung chat kasi mm-hmm. habang nanonood kayo the students are also able to say what mm-hmm. they want to mm-hmm. well, react to whatever they're seeing mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. I agree I agree so please do check out uh, to those audiovisual teachers meta stream I use that also in class kasi in zoom naglalag if you would share videos no but with meta stream you'll be able to watch it together in a class pero mas uh, stable yung connection any other suggestions that you would like to um give to our audience I think they would love to know Miss Candy, sa amin naman no, na-mention ko na kanina yung kung ano yung ginagamit namin talaga. No? Um, for me, still, the best na nagagamit namin for our synchronous classes is Zoom because of all of mm-hmm. the options, the security options mm-hmm. that you have here, um, the sound options. Salimbawa, yung, di ba mayroon tayong tab for turn on original sound. So music mm-hmm. yan is gamit na gamit talaga nila. Because um, kapag may background music ka kasi, hindi mo siya gustong i-filter. So, you mm-hmm. have an option to actually filter the, the whatever you can hear in the background or not. So, that's mm-hmm. one thing for music. And um, sa amin naman, sa dance at saka sa, sa theater, ang nangyayari kasi is madalas ang ginagawa namin, um, the performance that we wanted to see them do in class, hindi na nila prepare ng sync session. No? Mm-hmm. So, dapat pagdating nila sa klase, may prepared video na yon. Oh, no? And mm-hmm. the thing is, what also helps us is having um, essentially a drive f- where students could actually mm-hmm, upload mm-hmm. all of their performances mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. when they get in during sync sessions, mm-hmm. supposedly na panood na nila dapat yung mga yon. Now, mm-hmm. um, it all boils down to um, paano namin na ma-maximize yung synchronous and async sessions. And I think that's also very important. No? Yung, yung sabi nga natin, one of the, the standards that we have for sync session is you only use that for collaborative activities, for rapport building, and for processing. No? Hindi na siya dapat yung time na nagtatrabaho tayo ng ano, ng, doon pa tayo gumagawa ng output. At least in, in our case. Ha? So, if there are some things that had to be um, coach mm-hmm. uh, magagawa namin yon once pagpunta namin sing session dapat na panood na yung video so ako sa mga classes ko what we do is we ask them to describe first yung performance mm-hmm. ng classmate mm-hmm. and then after that that's when we do the coaching mm-hmm. and then um, parang ang pinapakita na lang ay yung mga photos mm-hmm. no, nakapos para hindi siya very challenging when it comes to the bandwidth at hindi maging issue yung um, mm-hmm. nahihirapan kaming panoorin siya ayun so mm-hmm. it also um, helps our students no uh, be more responsible when it comes to doing the tasks before you come into class. Kasi kapag mm-hmm. hindi mo nagawa yung mga bagay na yun at pumasok ka ng sync session, wala ka masishare sa klase. Mm-hmm. No? And mm-hmm. when when you do sync sessions, you you really have to make sure that you get to check in no, with with everyone. And that's I think mm-hmm. that's the beauty of also how how we tweak the activities and place mm-hmm. them in synchronous and mm-hmm. mm-hmm. async sessions. No? Mm-hmm. I think, Miss, no, uh, with with what you have shared, it's not just really about the technology and the applications, but the system. Like what you've mentioned, async, async, uh, uh, sync, async, then upload it on a drive. It is not just the application, but also your processes, um, how you organize things. Uh, thank you for that, Miss Da. Um, I think, Sir Hansel, for this question, the challenges for the arts, um, arts management, um, arts research class. Okay, no. Um... Well, the nature of our subject, it being a management um, course, uh, and we already have established texts, we have established practices, uh, there's a temptation for us to tend to go to the more traditional straight-on lecture. Yung bang magtuturo ka lang just in front of the video, no? If the front of the video come and uh, record the lecture and give it to the students. So there's a temptation for us to do that. And well, honestly, most of the teachers would already resort to that. but um, we we learned along the way you know and um even uh with the with our teachers that the students need um some sense of the students need um energizers and activities to mm-hmm. couple that 
concept. Kasi ang bigat-bigat na nung tinuturo namin. Imagine teaching senior high school, um, not the non-ABM students, management. No, How do you teach technical uh, practices of control, planning? So how do you teach that to students who are not um, initially into that? No, So so we have text, we have lectures, but we um, sandwich it between activities and Uh, you mentioned nga po earlier the, the technologies that we use and um, our man arts management teachers try to experiment no, and use different apps so that we could just complement our content with the what necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. In our classroom, it, because our activity is a scaffolded activity, we have a final project in mind and all of the activities must um, point towards that final output and then each activity is a collaborative because it's a management class so we mm -hmm. give premium to collaboration so in zoom we use breakout sessions you know the breakout rooms for students to discuss with their group mates no um we also use um, different ways of giving feedbacks no um the feedback um uh, for example we allot our asynchronous class for consultations only no Um, we um, so there are some teacher, for example, who would open Zoom just for a sync for students who are willing to ask questions about the activities because they needed to be guided how to do the activity because we are asking them to do um, a real activity, no, that can be launched by the end of the term. So crucial, yung mga ilang parts, no. Um, some teacher, for example, would use live tracker. Uh, mind you, gumamit siya ng Excel sheet na that can be seen by students kung saan nakatik kung ano na ba yung requirements na nagawa, ano mm -hmm. na ba yung na-check ng teacher, ano na ba yung kulang pa ng grupo na to, so that they on them own. Parang um, we're using a project management tool, no? but the mm -hmm. teacher uses Excel sheet para lang mas, mas mm -hmm. palatable sa estudyante. So um, ako for, why, I, for, for once, I'm also using a flip grid, no? Flipgrid is a quick video feedback tool for the activities no? that the students, instead of asking them to write reflections on paper, I ask them, oh, just record a video through Flipgrid and tell me what your thoughts about this particular case, this particular question that we have. And then the, uh, the students could just record two minutes or fewer, um, fewer seconds of answers. And then we could just interact no it's not a call mm -hmm. but it's a sending of video messages mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so really use different technology mm -hmm. and what we get it's we are open to other technologies that we have um another thing that's uh, very peculiar peculiar in our classroom is the idea of again no just like what miss jeng said no of using or inviting um, guest speakers mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. because in our courses We really need to have to build linkages. No, um, the students would really need to listen to industry experts. No, what they're doing in the field because as teachers we're only limited. No, our experience is still limited. So we know people. It's a good thing that the arts management teachers um, know few people. You no, know, that can really teach what's going on in the field. And this gives interest to the students. No, this, ah, ito pa rin nangyayari. Ah, ito pala yung nangyayari. Especially now, no, we're in. Uh, the cultural industry is heavily um, affected. So we um, ask the student na ito talaga yung nangyayari sa labas, no? Because, um, di ba, we have this notion that learning um, comes beyond the four walls of the classroom. In this case, the four walls of the screen that we have, no? We have to learn outside. And um, think uh, gratitude to the, our institution for providing us with um, resources that we can use, no? Uh, allowing... Uh, other, mind you, they're also like Peer Deck, di ba? They already mm -hmm. gave us premium on yeah. uh, Peer Deck, which, which is really useful for having engagement, uh, engage, highly engaged lessons, no? And, you know, so um, it's challenging and exciting, but it's a mix of both, no? We really can't say, oh, now we have the perfect management classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, we really can't say that, but we have mm -hmm. to do what we can and maximize our resources so that at the end of the term or at the end of the academic year, our goal actually in the arts management cluster is after ng matapos na yung subject, they, the students can actually have businesses, they can work as professional artists, no? Uh, para nga kaming TESDA, no? Gusto namin maging TESDA-like na 
after nito, pwede kayong magtrabaho. Parang ganun. We, we try to to give that kind of content for them and um, um, experience. Yun lang po. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Sir Hans. Anything that the panel would like to add? Yan, may habol daw si Ms. Da. Mm-hmm. Quickly lang, no, Ms. Candice, na-realize ko, nabanggit ko yung Zoom, pero yung lagi kong kaharap, hindi ko nabanggit Canvas. No? Yeah. At the mm-hmm. beginning, it was very challenging for me to mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. use Canvas. But ngayon, when looking back, no, ang laking help niya sa ating teachers mm-hmm. because we're using mm-hmm. multiple applications in our classes and everything can actually be linked to it. And that's something mm-hmm. that's very helpful. Mm-hmm. And another thing that I appreciate about how the university utilizes it is that it's a standard for everyone. So mm-hmm. it's actually easier to holla if you need help right because we we had um mm-hmm. we they rolled out sessions to help us understand what canvas is and up until now there's still the animal space is still exactly. giving us tips on how we could better mm-hmm. utilize mm-hmm. the apps that are linked to canvas and how we could better utilize the functions that mm-hmm. it actually has so yun. exactly so kay na address ni canvas no um pag may arising need ah parang okay ito para sa para masuportahan yung online learning ng mga bata they add these features on, on our canvas really really helpful but i guess what the main um, key takeaway that i got no from this discussion is that more than the technology and more than the content and pedagogy our main concern is really about our students how to make personal connections to make sure that they are motivated that they see the relevance of of our courses that they Feel ko nga hindi na natin masyadong issue yung content kasi we know our content already. We are creative and innovative in our in our um um strategies. Pero yung ating main concern, paano natin i-engage yung ating mga estudyante that the learning will be really relevant and and meaningful. Um I like that you have emphasized no yung creating personal connections na kahit meron tayong wall of of technology of gadgets between us but we can still have that personal connection um to our students so our teaching would still you know um teach minds touch hearts and transform lives ayan so napakahalaga noong noong aspect na yon that that's my key takeaway with everything that you that you have ch- shared we are flexible we are adaptive but the core of it is the welfare of our students thank you for that teachers and lastly to close our discussion um what do you think is the milestone of of all your preparations and uh, so far no what you consider as the milestone of an online distance learning for the con- of arts and design um, courses and how do you think or what do you think are the implications of, of all these experiences and all these milestones to the development of, of art education not just in the Philippines but but around the world Miss Candice I believe it's the the challenge that the pandemic posed to education particularly in art education that um, that it's possible that classes may not be held in rehearsal rooms or in art studios. And as artists, we have to deal this reality. And, as, and when we go back to the new normal, it seems that the landscape of education would not be the same. And online learning uh, may not be, uh, will be part of the, the new normal in education. And so is in art education. And that we have to, as artists and educators, we have to um, be ready to, to deal this. Mm-hmm. And uh, one thing that I, I see, you know, and Sigura, something that I would always um, want um, arts educators um, to, to always go back, um, whether it's online or um, face-to-face, is to always go back to the purpose of educating our students in humanities, in arts and in design um, and that is to appreciate no um, our humanity and celebrate our humanity and especially in this online distance learning um, we play an important role in humanizing the experience of our students especially when that we are separated and technology is advancing and there's a feeling of alienation um, in this in all this experience and that's why the arts education is relevant they said that um, arts is no longer relevant it's stem because 
uh, it's all about technology. But remember, um, we need to humanize our experiences. Um, uh, we need to feel that we are people. And because of this, we have a place and we are relevant. And um, that as arts educators, um, we always have to, to go back as our principal in designing our lessons and ensuring that in our classes, our students will find um, their purpose, they find um, their meaning, and they find expression. Thank you for that, Sir Engel. Very well said po, no? We always go back to the purpose of what we are teaching. And at the same time, our situation actually highlighted the importance of, of our, uh, our discipline no? to, to the lives of the people, to the humanity. Thank you for that, Sir Engel. Ms. Jeng? Um, I think um, yung conduct of delivering things, it will always be um, something that we have to update. So dati, kailangan lang natin maging updated dun sa content. Eh. But now, the manner of conducting things and also being aware of what are the available platforms to easily uh, deliver things. Like right now, if you want uh, galleries, there's exhibit.com mm -hmm. and so much more. And also the ability to share that with your colleagues. Because what we know, we always share with our colleagues. And that's the best thing about our unit. Um, I think also there will we we are going to fall short really on the techniques, but we are giving a more active role for the students to really develop their artistry. And I believe that this pandemic really created a wave of a diff, of a different type of artist because they're they they are able to brace the pandemic, so they're really mm -hmm. very strong mas flexible sila dun sa mga nauna sa kanila. Mm -hmm. When the motivation comes, as mentioned by Sir Engel, kapag na-demotivate na yung mga students natin, because meron silang blocks eh, lalo ngayon na sila lang mag-isa, wala silang nakukuha inspiration sa mga kaklase nila. I think we really have to inculcate and remind them the contributions of arts in the society. That when the pandemic put the world into a halt, it was really arts who really made the lives of the people bearable and livable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yun yung kailangan natin paulit-ulit na sabihin sa mga studyante mm -hmm, natin, mm -hmm. even to ourselves, to us teach, uh, to us, we are all artists as well. So kapag nahihirapan tayo, yun, yun yung isipin natin. Now we are a cure, mm -hmm. especially to mm -hmm. the mental health mm -hmm. of many people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Uh, lovely, lovely, Miss Jeng. Maraming pong salamat. Miss Da? Yan, siguro sa akin, Miss Candice, I could relate it to one of the, siguro yung feeling na minsan hinahanap natin no, pag nanonood tayo ng isang drama or ng isang trahedya, yung cathartic effect, no? I do think our art classes provide that particular feeling, but I do not mean it in a negative way. As mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, the classes now becomes very open for students to express themselves. Yeah. No, kagaya ng mi mention kanina ni, ni Mr. Engel and ni ni Miss Jeng. No, um, gusto natin maging malaya sila to express themselves into these classes. Kasi mas okay naman na pag-usapan natin yung mga ganitong bagay that could bother them in a better context and in, in a better setup kesa sinasarili lang ng, ng ating mga bata. So, um, that gives us um, a reason no, to, to really um, to really invest on no art classes. No, kung nakikita mm -hmm. nga natin, yung ibang mga tao na may ibang profession during the pandemic, they also turn into art to express themselves and to express their feelings. No, What more tayo mga tao na nasa field of art and we'd also like to open that opportunity to everyone mm -hmm. Ayun, thank you miss na sir hansel i think one takeaway from uh from the arts management side of uh the world no when we we sometimes one one of these days now we pointed out to the students that um, the pandemic actually leveled the playing field for artists mm -hmm. in the industry no sabi ko nga doon sa mga estudyante no? so nakikita nyo na that as even as as uh, a senior high school student can sell online and can exhibit themselves online uh, because everyone's doing it online no you don't mm -hmm. know you you don't know uh, now you don't have the you, hindi mo na kailangan ng um, mm -hmm. connections to the galleries mm -hmm. um, hindi mo kailangan ng um, patron support hindi mo kailangan ng easy uh, exclusive mm -hmm. access sa uh, para lang makapag-perform everyone's performing in YouTube everyone's performing live in Facebook Everyone's exhibiting Instagram. So, sabi ko sa kanila, this is an opportunity 
for you to actually create more works of art. And if mm-hmm. you want, you can sell it to, to your people mm-hmm. or to expand mm-hmm. your horizons. Because mm-hmm. every artist now, no, sabi ko sa kanila, mapastudyante, professional artist, you're now using the same platform. Mm-hmm. And um, on a lighter side, no, with, when looking at the arts management classes, no, I think digital classes are here to stay. We may mm-hmm. see in the future a blend of physical, yeah. tapos may mga nakatabing projector mm-hmm. or nakatabing monitor, including Zoom. No? And then, um, this opens up the idea of cultural exchanges. No? We may see mixed race in the future, no? na parang foreign school, that senior high school, it, other senior high school from, from other, non, even non-Filipinos, no? that we can see a possibility for cultural exchanges no? mm-hmm. for for sharing exciting. of oh, exciting time, no? Ah, siguro after na ng pandemic, no? saka na tayo ma-excite. Pero, so there, <laughs> there's a possibility of um, the, the world is op- open, uh, it's opening up for them, no? So, so mas napabilis ang, uh, ang commun- uh, in, in the terms of globalization, no? uh, mediated uh, global community na mas napaliit no? we- while we are all at home, no? So, I think on a lighter side that could be a possibility and uh for arts management everything's possible now no you don't have mm-hmm. the space the distance uh the geography to limit um the exposure of art making and performance so i think mm-hmm. that's it for mm-hmm. on my end mm, thank you sir hans i think you have mentioned that despite the challenges there are actually opportunities provided by this online format. I think we have to end our our discussion now. Thank you very much to our dear discussants for what you have shared with us today. Um, it has affirmed the great qualities of our educators, being resourceful, adaptive, creative. And I think um, um, it is also an important element that we are compassionate. We are... Um, we believe in our purpose. I would like to quote yung sinabi ni Sir Engel, no? it is possible. All of the experiences that we had, the, the challenges and the milestones, it made us realize that it is possible. And we're looking forward that whatever leaps forward that we have made in this online distance learning, it would lead us to the creation of a better normal for education and hopefully a better world for for everyone. So to all who have joined us today, especially to our co-art educators, tayo po lamang ay magpatuloy para sa sining at para sa mga kabataang ating hinuhubog at pinaglilingkuran. Maraming salamat po. Animo LaSalle.